Hi, today I want to show you this bug pillow that I made inspired by the Colleen Estrada Spring Summer 2022 show. I don't even know if this was like, I don't know if this is canon. I don't know if they actually made this for the show, if they just bought it. Um, but I was, you know, flipping through the pics and I didn't really see any designs that I thought I could recreate clothing wise, but this little girl holding this pillow was so cute and I've been wanting to make some pillows. We got a new couch and I feel like it needs some more color on it, some more, you know, pillows. Um, and I had been wanting to make like a stuffed animal style pillow. So this turned out to be exactly what I needed. And this is just kind of like a fun change of the type of DIYs I usually do for this, you know, throwing in a little home decor. I really like how this turned out. The only thing I will say is that I use polyfill to fill it, which unfortunately gives it this kind of white puby effect. Um, and I should have known because I had just watched a Quicken video where she was using polyfill and describing the same phenomenon. I just, I've used polyfill before. I never had this problem. I think it really depends on the fabric you're using. So that being said, I would recommend using a different type of stuffing or else a thicker fabric. You could also cut up scrap fabric if you save your scraps and your trimmings. Stuff that in there instead and make a softer, non puby finish. <laughs> Since I do have that issue with this, I might just put this on a shelf. I would like to like set up some shelves. I would like to set up some shelves in my office um, where I display the DIYs that I don't necessarily wear but I'm proud of. So that's where this guy will probably go. I'll probably make another one, something similar to actually put on the couch. And you didn't need to know any of that. So here's the tutorial. So I started by just drawing the design out on a post-it so I could kind of get the idea of the shapes that I needed to create for my pattern. And then I pulled out my recycled packing paper. I hoard this stuff for instances like this. It's really great if you order packages online, you should be saving this paper so you can make your own patterns. And then I just started freehand drawing the bug design. So as in my drawing, I decided to do this in three pieces, um, the head and then the two body pieces. So I've got the head down, now onto the body. And because this is going to be identical for the left and right side, I only need to draw out one. And I'm just marking these cut four, cut two, so I remember. And if I ever want to use this pattern again, I have that information. And then just cutting out the pattern pieces. Now for my fabric, I found this cool iridescent shimmery kind of fabric, which reminded me of the original inspiration and very just bug-like in general. So I'm laying out my pattern pieces and pinning them in place. Once they're all pinned, you'll start cutting them out and I did cut the headpiece on the fold. I should have just cut two, like I wrote on the pattern, uh, because I did end up having to cut a hole in the fold to put the stuffing in. So just cut two, don't cut it on the fold. But I am also adding a bit of a seam allowance around the edges of the pattern. And then doing the body pieces, you'll want to do two face up and two face down because it's a mirror image. You wanna make sure you're not just doing four of the same direction, if that makes sense. If you have any experience with patterns, you know what I'm talking about. Even if you don't, hopefully you understand.
So now everything is cut and I am laying the pieces out. As you can see, I have the mirror image of these pieces and I'm going to fold one over like so, pin right sides together. And then do the same thing for the remaining two pieces, right sides together. And I'm only going to sew the length of those pins because I decided I wanted to have the body pieces just attached in the center from the jump so I didn't have to attach them later. So then we end up with two pieces like this where they're attached. And then I'm going to put right sides together again and pin and just go around and sew all around the edges of this shape, leaving a little space in the top for me to put the stuffing into. Then I'm taking the head piece and folding it right sides together, pinning it in place, and then also going to go around the edges of this. And like I said, I ended up having to cut a hole in the fold to stuff the stuffing into, so I just sewed all the way around all of the edges here, just sewed it completely up and then cut the hole later. So I cut the hole because I also needed that to turn this inside out. And this takes a lot of finessing with your fingers, with a stick. Try to use something that's not too sharp so you don't poke a hole through the fabric or the stitches. But yeah, this is the most time consuming and annoying part of this, especially because of the shapes of this design. All of these long pointy shapes are pretty annoying to turn back out. But once you do, you can get your stuffing. Uh, like I said, polyfill was not the best choice for this specific type of fabric, but whatever you're using to stuff, it's the same thing. Like you gotta get all in those crevices, use a stick, use your fingers, have a TV show on, like this is gonna take you a while. Then once it's all stuffed, you kind of fold in the opening and pin it in place. And then I just did a whip stitch to close it up. This isn't the most like hidden way to do it, but because I am attaching the head over top, it doesn't matter. Same thing with the hole in the head. I am just folding it closed, pinning it in place and doing a quick whip stitch to secure. So now I have the head and the body and the body, I didn't like this like hole in the center there. So I made this little triangle piece, which I just attached in. And then now I am sewing the body and the head together, just kind of any way I can uh, to be effective, but also not too obvious. I guess it's like a whip stitch, but yeah, you just want to go back and forth between the two pieces on the seams to connect them. And once you're done with that, you're done with the pillow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with the next DIY.